Okay. Hi, everybody. I'm very excited to be uh, starting this session. And uh, Ian Sutherland is joining me later on. And uh, after both of our sessions, we're going to have a quick chat where we discuss some of the things we've been talking about. But I am very excited to have you here today to talk in, talking about the importance of Twitter. Uh, Twitter for me is hugely important. Um, it's hugely important because it allows us to connect with readers. It's an unprecedented opportunity. And if you're sitting there and thinking, should I be doing Twitter? Why am I doing Twitter? Twitter is changing. This is an unprecedented opportunity and it's available for all of us. So I'm going to just share my screen and show you a couple of slides. I'm not going to go on too long in this uh, section. But I'm going to show you a couple of slides which gives you my ideas about uh, the importance of Twitter and why it's vital, why Indies couldn't really do without it. I think it's had a big impact on um, all of our uh, fortunes. Twitter, could indie publishing survive it? So wherever you are in the world, I believe that Twitter can help you. And I believe that indie publishing would be suffering without it. We wouldn't be able to do, we wouldn't have achieved uh, what we have achieved. And my personal background is I've trad published three with Harper Collins, uh, wonderful, uh, translated into 10 languages. Uh, the last one came out about three years ago. And then it was put into the US market. And um, I have um, indie published. So I'm hybrid. I've indie published. And I have a new thriller coming out um, next week, by the way. I won't uh, say the name of it now because it's not all about self promotion. Uh, but uh, the. Let's see. OK, we've got the next slide. Hopefully, you can see this. Uh, how useful is Twitter for indies? So useful. I actually pray it won't change, okay? I pray that Google won't take it over and break it. It's so useful because we can see readers in our genre. I write adventure mysteries. We can see readers in our genre and contact them without being a friend already. Now, the culture on Twitter is different to Facebook. Facebook, if someone tries to contact you and they're not a friend already, you, you're cautious because they might be able to see your family pictures or whatever. On Twitter, it's all about increasing your numbers and accepting people. The culture is that people accept you. So on Twitter, we can follow anyone without being seen as a stalker, without being seen as somebody who's just, uh, why are they following me? Most people, the vast majority, 90-something percent, will accept you as a follower or just won't follow back, which is fine. Uh, they won't follow back. But most people will not object to the fact that you tried to follow them. They won't object to it. So we can meet new readers and influencers easily. The culture is we can follow people. We can follow readers in our genre. So I can follow the followers of other adventure and mystery writers. And they are the people who are likely to be readers in my genre. And people say, well, why would you do that? But actually, Quite a lot of them say, thank you. Uh, I'm interested in your books. Oh, I was looking for a new thriller or a new adventure writer. And they're interested in this era. People on Twitter, the culture is about meeting people. So there's no problem. And quite a lot of influencers, if you provide something of value, will get back to you as well. So Twitter is an unprecedented indie opportunity. The reality is... Ebooks by Indies are taking the top Amazon chart positions in the US. This is the data from author earnings from Hugh Howey's, and you can see the link there at the bottom. Four of Amazon's top 10 best selling ebooks in January this year, on the 10th, were self published indie titles. Now, I would think that the majority, if not all, of those uh, indie authors are on Twitter and promoting their books on Twitter. There may be one, and you can go through the list and see if you can find them. There may be one uh, indie author, one or two who are not. For instance, 10 of Amazon's top 20 best-selling e-books were self-published indie titles. So uh, indies are doing really well. And the predictions are that e-book sales are going to increase considerably over the next few years. And this means that indies 
have a real opportunity to take a big slice of the publishing market, to reach readers directly. This is an unprecedented, I keep saying that, sorry, an unprecedented opportunity for authors, people like us, indie authors, hybrid authors, people who've been trad published, for people like us to reach readers directly. So that's the reality. Ebooks are moving up quickly. You're probably aware that there's a new Twitter timeline. Uh, Twitter have changed our timelines. This is in our home tweets feed. Twitter are now selecting, and I've counted this a number of times in my uh, Twitter feed, Twitter are now selecting about 50 tweets and putting them in front of us first. And people, there was a big uproar for a while about whether this would be good uh, to have tweets selected for us. And I actually think it isn't good. It is good. Uh, it helps. It's good because it increases engagement with Twitter. I don't know if you've ever felt like, um, oh, my home feed isn't that interesting. I need something more interesting. Well, the new home feed is really interesting. And I would encourage you, wherever you are, to spend more time on Twitter, to look at the new home feed, to see the tweets that Twitter is presenting to us as they want it to be more interesting uh, for us. And uh, I think it is. Uh, they're using an algorithm, uh, something similar to what Facebook is doing, presenting tweets to us which they think will, uh, we will engage with because of our previous interest, uh, because we followed somebody, because of these are the type of people we're following. So Twitter is making our timelines more interesting. So please engage more on Twitter. And I know I'm doing it. And the feedback uh, I get from Twitter directly, uh, the company I own is booksgosocial.com and we promote authors and we also advertise with Twitter. And the feedback that I've got directly from Twitter is that uh, in the US, the numbers coming out are that engagement, that is conversations on Twitter are increasing because of the new timeline. So this means we can put aside our fears about the timeline, whether it's causing problems, it's increasing engagement. If you're an indie author, please spend more time on Twitter. It is a real opportunity. I don't know how long it's going to last where we can find readers. I hope that Google doesn't buy it and take it over and break it for us, that we don't have to spend a lot of money on advertising with um, Bob or one on Facebook, that we still have this opportunity. So to support Twitter, I encourage you to do that, to spend more time on Twitter. So it's making our home page more interesting, encouraging us to spend time on Twitter. And it is bypassable. At the top of your news feed, there is a link which says view new tweets, and you'll see all of the reverse chronologically ordered tweets as you previously got on Twitter. So how can we compete? What are we going to do as indie authors? I think the aim for us should be to be better than trad published books in every way. That means better editing, better covers, better book descriptions. Everything we need to get right should be better than trad published. We not only have to look great, we have to have great descriptions, the books themselves have to be great, but the aim should be to be better than trad published books, not a poor second cousin of trad published books. If you're publishing, make sure that your um, covers are eye-popping, uh, innovative. There's something incredible and interesting about your book being presented. And I think we should also take this to Twitter as well. The tweets we make should be eye-popping, uh, innovative, incredible and interesting. So uh, I'd like to show you a couple of tweets. I got some from um, Twitter, actually, who uh, contributed uh, towards this. Uh, which I'm just going to show you. And hold on a moment. Finally, it comes up. Okay, this tweet was sent to me uh, because Twitter thinks Penguin are doing a great job. And this was just to, on April the 6th. And this is a nice gif. Uh, I don't know if you like cats, but um, 
But this is interesting. I think it's interesting. This is the Penguin Random, and I think they're pretty good, okay? So let's move on quickly. Uh, something in terms of text that I think is inspiring. Hugh Howie's one here. Text that makes me want to click is great. Look at that one. The New York Times bestseller list is a sham. Now, who wouldn't want to click that link? The New York Times bestseller list is a sham. Oh my God, that's a great one. So that's a text one, which is really interesting. Okay, he's providing value. Hugh is providing value. He's well known for that. I think this one is good from libraries. I think it's good because of the interesting layout and there's a lot of information presented really well there. Um, this one from Simon & Schuster. This is about Stephen King's, uh, Stephen King's uh, series, which has moved to television in the US, as you all probably know. So I think that's interesting, and uh, that's from Hulu, but it was re retweeted by Simon and Schuster. This is Random House, okay? Uh, Random House, that's nice. We've used that. It's a meme. It's a Disney, uh, possibly, a meme, and Random House are doing that. So they're making their tweets more interesting. Now I've got a, a couple. We make animated GIFs for our clients at Books Go Social. And uh, this is one of them uh, that we've made. This is a book about family, and uh, I think it's really interesting. We get a lot of clicks on these. We make them for our clients, and this is trying to bring something more to Twitter, uh, make it better than Facebook, uh, make it someplace you're going to find books that you're really interested in. Um, this one is that slide actually is about ebook growth. This is one of the ones we do for our own service um, at thebookpromoter.com and uh, this is another animated gift. So I think this is a challenge for us to be innovative, to be interesting, to be exciting. Uh, so that's what um, I hope we'll do. Where were we? Hold on one second. Okay, so innovate. My um, encouragement to you and my advice to you is to innovate with video, with GIFs with hashtags, with supportive networking. It's all about networking. You can meet lots of people and join a network of people, form a network of people, and you will get a lot of support. Of course, we need to have some buzz with real excitement. And, uh, and buzz and excitement, uh, they come if it comes naturally. If you're excited about the launch of your book, if you're excited about your new cover, it'll come across naturally in your tweets and in the way you promote yourself. So um, I see we're going up up through the uh, bullet points here. So I think it's important to give value, um, to tease with your tweets and to provoke curiosity. So those three last bullet points are what I recommend we do in 2016. Give value, tease, provide some real excitement and innovate in the way you're dealing with Twitter, in what you're doing, create GIFs, videos, hashtags, and be supportive of the network that you're creating. So thanks from all of us at Books Go Social. Uh, we're doing our best to support indie authors. And uh, I think that's about time now for me to hand over to Ian. So uh, Ian, over to you. Okay. Uh, hi. Uh, um, thanks, Lawrence. That's uh, absolutely fascinating, and I'm uh, looking forward to talking to you about some of the points that you raised uh, raised later. So I'm going to uh, take it to another level, I think, and probably get into um, how indie authors can be a lot more pragmatic about how they use Twitter and how they can grow their following and expand their reach and, and hopefully uh, sell more books. Um, I think everything that you talked about is completely valid and usable with what I'll, with, which, with everything I'm about to say. Um, and uh, so hopefully this should flow nicely. Um, I also have uh, prepared some slides. So let me just quickly um, share my screen uh, in the same way and start. And we go here. So hopefully you can um, see the uh, slide. Can you give me a thumbs up, Lawrence? Perfect. Okay. So um, the techniques I'm going to talk about um, are all contained in a book I uh, released last year <clears throat> called Advanced Twitter, Twitter Strategies for Authors. And they, this all came about because um, I am a, uh, a, a fiction author. And that's, what, that's my primary um, uh, focus. 
I have uh, two books out. Um, that's the covers there. And uh, I got into having released them. I got into well, how do I get them in front of um, in front of people? And so um, I ended up looking at Twitter, Facebook, all the various social media um, outlets because everyone's on there. Um, and Twitter just made more sense to me, partly because of what Lauren said earlier. You know, you can um, have relations with people without it being a, a two way um, a two way relationship. So you can follow people; they don't have to follow you back. Um, but those that do, um, you can then, uh, everything you tweet will get seen. Well, used to get seen until Twitter changed the timeline, which Lawrence has just talked about. So uh, that's interesting. Um, but so I developed these techniques and then took them to another level uh, as I got more into it. And in, in the end, other authors, uh, when I talked to them, said, Ian, that's really interesting what you're doing with Twitter. Why don't you write it down? Which is why I, I wrote the uh, the nonfiction book on, on these strategies. Um, I guess the... Uh, the reason I was able to do all that is because in my past life I um, I've been a bit of a techie, and uh, so Twitter was um, uh, I just you know treated it as something I wanted to master and um, figured out how to make the the most of it. And the result is I've got you know um, many many followers and, and growing every day. And the importance of more followers uh, is that you have far greater reach. So everything you tweet will get seen by more people, but more importantly, those tweets will get retweeted and retweeted and so on. So your reach becomes exponentially greater the, the more followers you have. So it is very important to grow your following. Okay. So um, Lawrence has probably covered some of this and actually provided some very innovative ways of standing out in the Twitter timeline. Um, this is kind of the opposite way. Um, I've seen people, you know, tweet in different ways about how to uh, buy their books, and you know, it's uh, they just, you know, put out some um, statement like, you know, hot new at the bottom here, hot new suspense book, only one dollar ninety nine, and it's amazing, and you should tweet. You know, there's nothing there that's going to make you want to click on it, and then they resort to tweeting the same thing over and over and over, as if that's going to change anything. Or they put lots of hashtags in their tweets or in their in their Twitter bio. The the logic of the hashtags is um, people can track track them and follow them, so they can see tweets from people you're not even following. Um, I've seen people do this a lot where they beg for retweets. I think that's terrible. Um, I see lots of people doing automatic auto direct uh, messages um, in reply to a follow um, and. Or, or even going as far as some of the uh, crazy services out there about buying follow, buying followers. None of that needs to be done. You can be a lot smarter about how you get the word out about your book without being overly promotional um, and by adding value at the same time. Because that's that's the importance. That you, if all you do is is shout buy my book, buy my book, buy my book, no one's going to listen to you. Okay, so you have to add value. You have to earn the right. Um, and then if you stand out with some of the techniques that Lauren, sh uh, Lauren showed, then even better. And the reason for all that, tw Twitter is not seen as somewhere where people go to be sold to. Okay, It's about being social. All right? And um, uh, being social is important. So if you're on Twitter, you ought to be social. You, 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 know, you need to do all the things I've got here. You, know, you tweet interesting content. You need to retweet um, other people. You need to follow good people. Uh, maybe if someone follows you, maybe you should consider following them, following them back. Maybe you should make lists of uh, the, the people that you find particularly interesting so that you can catch everything they say on Twitter um, rather than relying on the timeline to spot that for you. Um, when someone starts a conversation with you, you, know, you need to reply and, and actually have a conversation and be interactive and be social. That's the whole point. Okay? And uh, I'll thank people who retweet you and so on and so on. There's, there's lots and lots and lots that you can do on Twitter. Um, and I discovered that you need to do all of these things um, but I'm an author, and I'm trying to write my next book. And if you get really into it, all of this just takes time, and it's an awful. It can be a real, um, you know, time suck um, if you allow it to be. And that was the approach I took to it. I wanted to get all the value from Twitter. I wanted to achieve all of these social objectives, but I still wanted to be able to promote and sell my book so that um, I could um, earn some money for my writing write the next one, and so on and so on, which is why I ended up looking at some of the techniques. Okay, So what I did is I researched the market. It turns out there's a load of third-party tools available, and uh, I did lots of testing, spent a fair bit of money figuring all this out, and um, came up with a set of um, tools and techniques that really work for me as an indie author 
to achieve all those objectives but still be able to promote my books without being seen as spammy and, um, um, and cut down the amount of time I actually spend on Twitter. So I actually spend under 15 minutes a day um, on actually on Twitter and I still get all the benefits that I've talked about and achieve all those things. And when I, as I was writing the actual book on this, I, I kind of wrapped it all together, came up with this nifty acronym called uh, about being sharp. And uh, I'm going to take you through that now and show you some of the tools that uh, um, I use to achieve these objectives of being systematic on Twitter, being helpful to others, being very active, being relevant, and most and most importantly, being personable, okay, and being social. Okay, so um, the point being is I use automation to do a lot of this um, so that I, I don't have to do everything manually and I have more time left to write. Okay, um, so the first one is about being systematic. Okay, so this really is about tweeting lots of stuff. Okay, and yes, you can spend all day as you're browsing the internet, you see an interesting blog post, you can press the share button on someone's website and share it. You can do all of those things, all takes time. Um, you've got your own posts and so on. I use a, a, a tool called Social Oomph, which is a third-party tool, and I fill it with lots of content um, that's uh, useful for me to tweet, and I then have those tweets go out um, over time, okay? And the, I have, the, there's a concept of queues in there, and I fill the different queues up with different types of tweets, and they go out all at different times. Some of those are... Um, new information that I, you know, a new website, and there's a post I want to share. I'll put it in a queue. I'll put it out three times a day so I catch the people in different time zones because obviously Twitter's uh, 20, 24 by 7 and, and people are on at all different times around the, around the world. Um, and I then set up uh, a whole set of tweets that I cycle through over time. And these, these might take a few weeks to cycle through, but there'll be posts on the subject or theme of my books. Um, and uh, uh, so that I'm tweeting interesting stuff around the subject of my books. I've got my own blog posts on my website. I have those go out and, you know, it keeps, the, keeps traffic coming to my website. Um, and I do all of that um, so that I'm, and all of that is about adding value, is about giving to my followers information that hopefully they'll find useful and relevant and, and interesting. And then in the middle of all this, and the classic 80-20 rule, you know, 80% value, 20% earns you the right to have um, maybe 20% promotional. And so in the middle of all that, I'll have the occasional promotional blatant marketing tweet, I call it. Um, and uh, I can probably take a few lessons from Lawrence around um, some of the making them more eye-dropping um, with uh, some animated GIFs or video. But the, the idea of um, putting out uh, the odds blatant marketing tweet is the whole point because you want people to discover your books. Um, I use a, a link shortener um, called Bitly. It's free, um, and Bitly allows me to make the links all shorter, which is nice. It, 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 it's just more pleasant to look at on in the Twitter stream. Um, but also, it has the capability so that I can track when people click on links that I've tweeted, so I can track everything I'm doing and understand if I'm actually reaching people the way I want to. Okay, so that's all about being systematic. Um, being helpful is really simple. That is about retweeting other people a lot. The more people you retweet, the more uh, people thank you. <laughs> um, the more goodwill you're creating, um, the better. And again, it's one of those things where, yes, you can be going through your timeline, as I do, and, and retweet things manually. Um, but uh, there are ways to automate that, which I've discovered. There's a product called Round Team out there that uh, allows you to, uh, just, you know, you can set it up with um, sort of filters on either hashtags if you're feeling brave or more likely pr public or private lists that you may have set up of people that you trust what they t tweet so that, that what you retweet is um, in line with uh, your, your overall messages. Um, and so it's an interesting approach, but it allows you it, – so it, it go, works 24-7 or, or, or for however long you um, set it, scanning for those hashtags or walking through those lists. And if, some, if it sees something that matches the filter, it will retweet it for you on your behalf. So, again, that's good because you're helping other people uh, by retweeting them and sharing their content. Okay? So that's about being helpful. Retweeting is a, is a very important part of Twitter. Okay, so automating it helps, of course, because it takes the time out of the day to leave you to write.
Um, being active, I mean, all I've talked about so far is about being active as well, but I kind of translated this one into more about growing your reach and the number of followers um, that you have, okay? So you can, obviously within Twitter, you can follow people, but um, there are faster ways to achieve that using some third-party add-ons. Some of these are free modes or trial modes. And you can use tools like Manage Flitter or Tweepy are the two best ones that I recommend. Um, and you can kind of semi-automatically follow and unfollow people. There, there actually isn't a way to truly automate this. Twitter um, has banned any tool that truly automates it, quite rightly, I think, um, because the, uh, the, their logic is the act of following someone ought to be a human making that decision, so you have to click on someone to follow it. So you still have to do the clicking, um, and that's part of the 15 minutes a day that I, that I spend on Twitter is doing some of this, um, but these tools help help to narrow down from all of the possible people on Twitter to those that are most likely to um, be buyers of my book. Um, and that I find those by following the followers of other authors like me. Okay, so I pick another thriller author, author um, look at their followers, and then I follow those. Some of those will be the readers of that book. They may see my follow. They may look at my tweets. They may start to become, they may follow me back, and they may then buy my book. Um, so that's the logic. And these tools help you find those a lot more quickly. And then uh, part of following, of course, is unfollowing. And, and some people are horrified by this whole concept of unfollowing people. But if someone hasn't followed you back and after a, a decent amount of time, you kind of have no choice but to unfollow them. You've given them a chance because Twitter um, has a rule around making sure that you don't follow more people than are following you. There's a 10% range. And so if you want to be able to follow more people in the future who are likely to follow you, follow you back so that, you, so that they may one day buy your books, um, you need to make room by unfollowing others. So it's, it's kind of forced upon us. Uh, but there are limits involved in that. Okay, So that's um, being active and then being relevant. Um, this kind of adds to what I started with on the scheduling, the tweets. Um, and here what I do is, again, using the, 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 the tool Social Oomph, I connect it to the RSS feeds of websites. If you don't know what an RSS feed is, um, this is every website, every blog site out there will have the ability to have a feed, and there are tools that you can use to um, check those feeds every now and again, and then you can then just view the new articles that are published, and it kind of comes through to you, a bit like your email, really. Um, and that's one way of looking at websites without having to browse them, so it's kind of a fast way of looking for new, new, new posts, new information that's out there, where you can actually connect social oomph to those, the feeds of those websites. And then as new um, articles are um, written and published, then you can then automatically retweet uh, tweet them through um, uh, providing a link back to the original article. And this is about adding value again, and it's about being very relevant. And obviously the, the blog sites that you'd follow would be relevant to your theme as a, an author, whether you're a fiction author or a non-fiction author. I've given some examples there. Um, there's my own one. There's the Ally um, self-publishing advice feed. Or you can go to new sites like, like The Guardian newspaper, um, as we see there. Okay, so it's just a great way of just adding more and more value and, again, giving you the right to, in moderation, promote yourself by having some of your tweets be marketing ones. And then the last one, the most important one, is about being personable. All, everything I've talked about so far has some level of automation attached to it. Um, this one just uses a Twitter's own tool called TweetDeck, and not everyone knows about it, but it's an app you can, uh, you can use. Um, and it will allow you to kind of filter your... Um, tweet streams so that you can see the important things um, and then you can interact with them quickly. The most important one being mentions. So if someone actually talks to you personally, then you can um, uh, reply to them, engage in conversation. You can look at your sent tweets so you can see what you've been sending out through automation. Um, you can look at your notifications and so on and so on. You can also then you know, filter down on um, hashtags that you might find interesting that you always want to be um, up to speed on and it, regardless of whether you, um, whether you follow someone or not. So TweetDeck is a really good tool to just filter down all of the, the noise that's in Twitter into a set of columns for you to review. And then as part of my 15 minutes a day, I will go through that and engage in conversation. Um, in a, in, and and that, that brings everything I need to to me so that I'm not just pushing stuff out, I'm actually interacting because that, as I said at the beginning, is the most important piece. Okay, So um, I think hopefully I've 
done that on time. Um, that's the uh, kind of what I had to say as an introduction to the techniques and the that I use to help get the word out about my book, but in a way that isn't isn't spammy. Um, I offer more information about this, so if you uh, if you want to. Uh, learn more, uh, click on this um, link here at the bottom, advancedauthorstrategies.com slash IAFringe2016, and you can um, subscribe to my mailing list and you'll get this 10-part video interview with me, so if you want to see more of me talking, um, you may not want to having seen this, but we'll see, um, um, or you can obviously um, read and, and buy the book. Uh, there is a um, giveaway attached as part of this, so um, subscribe there and you, you, you can be put into the giveaway to, to get a free copy. Or if you want to get a half price one, then um, uh, you can, the, the link is on, the, the code is on this website for you to be able to get it half price from, um, from Smashwords if you're interested in it. Um, but hopefully, regardless of whether you look at the book or not, um, maybe the video series, but hopefully this has given you some good ideas about how you can um, take what you do on Twitter to the next level get the word out about your books, but not have it dominate your life so that you can leave time to write the next one. Thank you for that, and uh, I think back to, uh, back to Lawrence. One. Ian, that was great. Thank you very much for all that. That was really comprehensive. It's amazing the amount of tools you're using that are so similar and what you're doing is so similar to what I'm doing as well. But I think it's important that people should know that you don't have to do all of the complicated stuff uh, in Twitter. You don't have to do all that. If you focus, if you're new to Twitter or you're coming back to Twitter, if you focus on that news feed, find things that are interesting, other people's covers, news about different sites, about authors or whatever you're interested in, whether it's football or whatever news about those things, click on the link, but thank the people, say thanks for that tweet, retweet them, things that you actually like. It's an amazing source of news, Twitter, and I'm not just saying that, I really think it's a great opportunity for us and we should focus on Twitter and look at it even in the simple way of what am I going to find in my news feed? And then some of the other things, basic things, following 25 people, even doing it manually, only takes like two, three minutes. So you can keep your Twitter down to 15 minutes a day. It's a great news source about things that you like. Follow people, followers of other, uh, other writers who, uh, whose readers might be interested in your work. You just follow 25, it takes a couple of minutes. Some of the people will actually say, thank you for following me. I didn't know there was another writer about football or whatever it is you write about. So that works and it's considered normal to follow people. Don't feel that it's wrong to follow people. That's what Twitter is about. It's about they, uh, people like that they'll get more followers, so people will like you following them. It's a bit of a culture change if you're not in, uh, used to following loads of people or you only have your family in Facebook, a little bit of a culture change, but it's a real opportunity for us indie authors, so take it at the basic level and then you can move up. Buy Ian's book. It's a great book. Buy Ian's book and learn about some of the advanced strategies if it suits you. But if it doesn't, just keep to the basics, like things, um, favorite things, put the heart thing on them. And I know Twitter is changing as well. They're going to be doing more uh, live feeds. There's going to be live uh, football feeds from the States. They bought uh, quite a few of the um, evening games, I think it is, uh, for next season. They bought those and they're going to be live tweeting. We're going to be live tweeting at our Books Go Social conference in June. We're going to be doing more Periscope. Um, that's live video events at that. And I really enjoyed the stuff, pushing the technology and seeing how far it will go. Um, the way things are now are not going to be the way it's going to be in the future. It's going to develop. It's going to get more interesting. So just get involved. Stay involved with Twitter. And uh, Ian, thank you very much for uh, that. It was a very interesting uh, session. Uh, and uh, let me just think of a good question now to ask you. So you're Dan, you, you've got it on 15 minutes. Presumably at some point you were spending quite a bit more than 15 minutes. Uh, yeah, so the, the reason I, I kind of went and researched all these tools is because all of those things that I was doing uh, that I've just talked through, you know, um, putting content out there, doing my promotional tweets, retweeting others, I was doing manually. Um, but I discovered that what I was doing is I was going in at multiple times during the day 
and it was breaking up my um, my burst of writing. I was, you know, going back to see what was going on. And then think, oh, I must follow some more people. I must retweet some people, and it started taking over. Um, particularly as you start seeing some of the results, and the results you can measure through the followers that you get. Um, so it becomes a bit addictive. And uh, so to break the habit, uh, the techie and me went and did a bit of research and found some tools to automate some of the more mundane things, but at least get them done a lot more quickly so that I had more time um, to, back to, to go back to writing, which is what I was really looking for. Um, the important piece, I mean, I like what you said a minute ago about the fact that you can follow anyone. It, one of my favorites is when, when you follow people, you, you stumble across someone who genuinely is a reader who's never had an author talk to them before, and you follow them, and then they reply going, wow, I've never been followed by an author. And you, you get this all the time, and it's, it's a fantastic way to um, build a relationship and build some intimacy, even though it's, you know, it's all that noise that's going on. But when you get a conversation going, that's, that's one of the best things you can do. Um, so uh, I, I'm a big believer in, in in making sure that you do engage, that you do put good content out, that you do talk to people, and you don't just blast out buy my book, buy my book. Otherwise, you just you just get unfollowed, or people will block you and and turn you off, and then what's the point? <laughs> so so yeah. One of the things I really like, and which I started doing, because I started on Twitter in 2009. And it took me a while to get going and see what was happening. And you learn it slowly. It's like learning any tool. You learn it slowly. Uh, but one of the things I found that works really well is having a blog working with Twitter. Because a lot of people, they've made blogs and about writing, about their books or whatever. And they say, but nobody's coming to my blog. But Twitter works really well with the blog. Because you tweet about your blog posts. Uh, related to your book is a good idea. Because then if people, if your book is about Venice and you write a blog post about Venice and you put that in a tweet, people who are interested in Venice are going to click that and go to your blog post, perhaps about how the lagoon is rising or whatever, and then at the bottom you put, and if you want to buy my book, click here and it goes straight to Amazon. So you're giving value for people who are interested in Venice, you're giving value and one some percentage of those people are going to say, oh, he's got a book about it, or she's got a book about Venice, uh, let's click here and buy it. So that thing about giving value, and I think it really works well if you have a blog post. Yeah, I, I agree on the blog thing. So you know, one of the things that happens is that you you write your blog posts, and they kind of they give you traffic to your website, which ultimately might convert into book sales for a week or so. But then it it, it kind of dies off um, unless it's being reblogged elsewhere. And um, one of the great things about the techniques I do is that I I put every blog post into a queue. So that every two or three weeks, I then it comes around again, and I push out another tweet or a couple of tweets about that blog post that I wrote, you know, a, you know, a couple of weeks ago. But over time, it could be a couple of years ago, yeah. And it's, it's you know, as long as it's still relevant, um, those tweets are going out, and people then will come back to your website if they find it interesting. And if, if it is a blog about Venice that I wrote two years ago, it's probably still valid. Um, and then people will discover you again. So the, the, the point is that your blog doesn't have to go stale. You can use something like Twitter to help keep it alive and keep it fresh. That's uh, absolutely valid. And one of the nice things about um, evergreen blog posts or evergreen content, that content that survives, is that we can update it. So we can go back to the post from a year ago or two years ago about Venice we can look up the current statistics about how the lagoon is changing and we can put in something at the bottom of the post saying the latest update for 2006 and then you can repost that and people, a lot of people who hadn't seen your original tweets, even if you do a series of tweets and I do recommend a series of tweets about a blog post and I, I, that was validated for me when I saw about two years ago that the New York Times uh, uh, were saying in their report of uh, a summary of their year and how social media was helping them at the New York Times. They said that the content that it was doing best was the ones that were retweeted, the ones that they reposted the content. So some people, you sometimes get an idea, we just have to post something or tweet about something once. No, we can tweet it again, even if it's uh, today and three days from now or five days from now uh, and again in a week. You can do that as long as you have a mixture of different tweets and perhaps express the tweet and the post in a different way, update on Venice, news on Venice, 
you can express it in a different way, but most of your followers won't have actually seen your first tweet. So uh, if you tweet it again and you have a series of tweets and you tweet your post about Venice, uh, some people who are really interested in Venice uh, may finally get to see it on the third occasion that you tweet it. So don't be afraid to retweet content and to make a content evergreen and to update your blog post if you've got a blog, if you've got content, go back over it, update it, see if you can make it better, see if you can improve it. Uh, oftentimes I go back and I see the edits, so I should have edited this, I should have made, uh, changed it in that way. You make it better and then you tweet about it again. So it really works. Evergreen content, pulling people. And the whole function of this is to get more readers. If I'd written a book about Venice, which I haven't, uh, to get more people uh, to that book and to read and to support us as authors and to spread reading, to spread knowledge and to spread reading. And so it's a, it's a good thing. We have to believe in ourselves that we can do this, that the stories we have to tell are important, that we don't have to wait for the big publishers in Manhattan or London to decide that we're the right people to write a book about Venice. We can write that book, we give it our best and then we put it out to the readers and now we have the power. We don't have to wait for somebody to tell us, to validate us. We can put out our book about Venice. I think it's a wonderful moment in human history. I know Jeff Bezos has described it as a renaissance in publishing and I think it's true. We are in a renaissance, a renaissance where uh, millions of people are now able to write their books about whatever they want, football, Venice, anything. They can write their books about this subject, they can get it out there, they can focus on improving the quality, going back in, edit it again, repost it back up to Amazon, make it better, make another book about Venice, whatever. That we are now in an era of freedom for us, for the individual to put their books out. So I think it's an amazing opportunity for us to get our books out that we don't have to wait to be validated. Well said. <laughs> and uh, as an indie, and I, I wasn't traditionally published, you know, I, uh, I was someone who uh, was obviously writing a book for years and was buying uh, Writers Monthly here in the UK um, and reading all, all this stuff that was very, very biased towards the, um, the, the traditional publishing industry. and. Um, and I discovered the, the indie movement. I discovered what was going on. People like Joanna Penn and, and so on. And uh, I just took a decision to ignore the whole thing and do exactly what you said and just take control. Okay. And that's what we have the ability to do now. And it's it, social media is one of the one of the reasons that we can all do that because we have the ability to talk to almost anyone we want to um, at all about our products, which are our books. And, um, and, and generate a readership. And as long as what you've put out there is as good as, if not better, than the traditionally published, which you opened up with, um, then you've got every right to do so. And that's certainly how I've approached it. And I love the fact that Twitter uh, gives us that reach. And uh, it's, good, it's good for people like us to be able to exploit it. I've got a question for you, Lawrence. Um, okay. In your, you, you gave some really good examples. I love the hedgehog, by the way. Um, you gave some really good examples, uh, and you mentioned that Books Go Social um, creates uh, some of these more eye-popping, animated GIFs, um, video type stuff. Um, how do you do that? What, what, what are the what are the tools that are available to us to help help others uh, achieve the same thing? Uh, a lot of this done can a lot of this stuff can be done on the internet at relatively low cost. I started out using Animoto.com, which has a free service. I recommend you get the commercial version, which is one of the reasons it's the commercial version is a little bit more expensive. But if you're going to do it to sell books, it's a commercial thing. So we pay for the commercial version. Animoto.com is an online uh, video editor. There are other online, and you can make them. Uh, Movie Maker is available on your Windows, and there's iMovie on Macs, I think. So what you can do is make a short, and I recommend 30 seconds or less. Uh, in fact, uh, some of our GIFs are getting down now to seven seconds, and some of these uh, online video creation tools, even on your phone, you can create something and edit something. So you create your movie, you create a, a, a .move file or a .mp4 file, you save it on your machine, and now some of the GIF-making sites, giphy.com or just Google, turn a movie, turn a, a video into a GIF, into an animated GIF, and they do it online for free. It's just amazing. They'll take your video file, 
Use the short ones, don't use the 30 second ones. Make that a really short um, um, uh, ad for your book, put your cover, something interesting, say something interesting, something of value or something you know, that will drive curiosity. Uh, the best book about or some amazing book about uh, Venice, the news from Venice, uh, the latest information from Venice. So it's something that will inspire people who are curious about Venice and you have some beautiful pictures, perhaps your own ones from your trip and then you have your beautiful cover and you turn that into an animated GIF free of charge. So it can be done. Um, uh, if you're using images, please make sure to use only images you own the copyright to don't get caught out using images you Google search on. Yeah. So that's why I encourage everyone, you know, use your cameras, let's take pictures, use your cover, you know, you own that. And uh, there are some great free sites for images as well out there if you uh, Google search that. So it takes some time and one of the things we do is we save author's time at booksgosocial.com in not having to build up a big following and not having to learn these techniques. And our aim is to save time for authors so and time is money and uh, we charge very low fees for doing that so that's the basis of uh, our business very very good and i think on the on the uh, images i think the term people should search for is is it creative commons i think from memory um that's and right. that that makes sure that the uh, the images that you use are are free and uh free of copyright and you're able to reuse them um so yeah uh, very very good um and you mentioned time i is have we come to the end Have we use all our time up I think we may have. Yeah. Uh, any any last? If there's anybody got any questions at all, you can go to booksgosocial.com to find out about our services. We have a lot of free material linked there as well. Uh, I believe we should give as much as possible. We should help each other as much as possible. So there's a lot of free blog posts about uh, how to use all of these tools, how to, you know, a whole range of different things. I've lost count of the number of blog posts uh, we have up there. So there's a lot of free information uh, and there's a free tweet, in fact, uh, linked to this uh, Fringe event. There's a free tweet uh, out to our followers and you can subscribe to that as well. And you can join our Facebook groups as well. And follow us on Twitter, send me messages on Twitter, uh, get involved. I uh, really appreciate you watching this uh, and spending time. I hope you found value in this. And whatever you do, I really wish uh, you all the best. Wherever you are, I wish you all the best. And thank you very much again for watching. And uh, uh, over to you for final something. <laughs> no, thanks, Lawrence. And uh, yeah, same message from me. Um, thank you all for listening. I hope you found it useful. Um, all of the techniques I talked about are available if you want to learn more about them in exquisite detail in the, in, in the book Advanced Twitter Strategies for Authors. But if you uh, would like to... Um, uh, just see the videos that I put together which give you a, a much more uh, better introduction then the uh, the link that I showed you earlier um, will we'll get you to that and obviously you can get the book uh, half price as well and also on that landing page if you go there um, the presentation that I put together uh, you can download from there so without signing up so if you want access to the to the slides that I used then you can um, you can get them from there so thank you once again and uh, uh, good luck on uh, on Twitter Hope you sell more books. <laughs> Look on Twitter. See you on Twitter. <laughs> Bye now.